Hello and welcome back to my channel. I'm back. It's been a brief hiatus. I've been on holiday. Forest have had a points deduction. Everything's gone a little bit crazy in my life and also in football. And so I thought, well, the last episode went down really well. I think it gave people a really good understanding of what PSR is, um, why it affects Forest, why it affects the Premier League and how it affects teams um, across the, the Premier League and also in other leagues as well. And so I thought it'd be great to bring back Kieran Maguire to talk a little bit about the, the recent situation at Forest. Forest obviously deducted uh, four points recently uh, and it's been a bit of a, an ongoing thing for a while. Uh, I think the last time we spoke, we had no idea what the consequence was going to be. But now we do know um, Forest could still appeal it. The owner wants to appeal it. Others in the club hierarchy are pretty happy to accept the four points. So we're going to be discussing a little bit about that deduction. We're going to be discussing about future um, PSR situations that Forrest could be in and also whether Forrest should actually appeal. But without further ado, Kerry Maguire, welcome to the podcast. How are you doing? Um, I, I'm keeping busy, Jamie, I think it's fair to say. And I suspect Forrest fans are sick of the sight of me and sick of hearing uh, of me. Uh, you know, you, you go along to the city ground to to watch your team to, to provide that magnificent atmosphere and to, to ideally see them win a few games, of course, um, and having boring old farts like me talking about PSR um, is uh, it's not what we signed up for when we fell in love with the game, was it? That's exactly. If only we could just go back to Saturday League kind of stuff, you know, just red shirts, no logos, and just keep it old school, I suppose. But the game isn't like that anymore. It's a business. And of course, with business comes rules. And according to the Premier League, Forest have breached those rules. And as a consequence, they've been deducted four points, £34.5 million over uh, the loss amount, which, which would put them about £95.5 million, I think it is, um, that they've they've lost altogether over the FF or sorry, the PSR period. So um firstly, what would you I mean, is it maybe a bit of an obvious question? Forrest made a lot of signings, but what would you put that down to? And also maybe how harsh would you say is a four point seduction? Because we kind of spoke about it before. There isn't really a benchmark, is there? No, if we if we take a look at both of those issues uh, in turn, with regards to the losses, um, they were significant in Forrest's first season in the Premier League. The rationale, the reason behind that was that Forrest were promoted to the Premier League with a squad at which at the 30th of June 2022, the total cost of that squad was £12 million. So therefore, if they were going to try to be competitive, if they were going to try to, you know, let's be honest, survive that first season, that's always your objective, then they were going to have to recruit. Um with regards to that recruitment, you know, I'm I'm football finance. I'm not football. You're your football, your your forest. As an outside observer, there didn't appear to be a strategy as such. You know, and, and you know, I I look at businesses and I look particularly at the business of football, and you can see some clubs appear to have a, a long-term strategy in terms of development. Um because Forest were in a fairly precarious position with regards to the fact that they didn't have many players in their squad at the 30th of June um, 2022, it was a it was hit and miss. There have been some hits, there have been some misses. Some of those misses have been very expensive. You know, we're not here to to berate individual players because I always take the view that no nobody tries to not be a success. You know, you're you're professional in whatever, but. It, it didn't work out, and, and they proved to be very expensive. You know, we, we, we know that there are players who are on five, six, seven million pounds a year at Forest who perhaps you know, didn't deliver in, in line with expectations. And that meant that the cost racked up. You had a significant investment in the transfer market, but it wasn't excessive. It, there was a lot of players, but a lot of those players themselves weren't on necessarily huge fees. Um, you know, that they, they certainly spent less, everybody spent less than Chelsea, but, you know, they spent less than some of the uh, other big six clubs, for example, as well. What, what created the losses for Forest was, if you take a look at a football club, you've got three sources of income. You've got your ticket sales, right, sold out the city ground every week. 
but it's not a big earning football ground. And that's not a criticism of the club and that's not a criticism of the fan base. Um, we've, we've seen comments from Ange Postacoglu in respect of, you know, Spurs, we welcome tourist fans. And why? Because they spend a lot of money. On average, at Spurs, they get £71 per fan per seat. And remember, that includes, you know, seniors, kids, family stand. So Forest don't. You know, Forest have got a different demographic. You know, I don't, have, you, have you been to the new Spurs stadium? Yeah, it's, it's amazing. But they've got everything there. They've got bars in there to keep you in there. It's a good strategy yeah. kind of from there. Yeah. And, and so they built it. They future-proofed it. Um, and they get a lot of tourist fans. You know, you know, Son is a brand in his own right. You know, everybody from South Korea, if they come to London, they want to go to Spurs, they want to see Son. And what are they going to do? They're going to go into the mega store. They're going to go and buy the home shirt, the away shirt, the third shirt, and anything with, with, with his name on it. So, so you know, as, as, a, as a cash generating business, it's absolutely fantastic. If you're a Forest fan, it's because either you're from Nottingham or the surrounding area, or, you know, your mum or dad supported Forest and, you know, you might have moved out or you, or you lived there as a kid. You're not going to be having those fans who are coming in on a week by week basis and going to the mega store and say, here's my wallet fill your boots with it, you know. So they don't get a huge amount of money from match day. Um, the commercial income, okay, I think if we're honest, the club pitched a price that was too high and therefore they weren't able to get a deal for a significant part of the season. Um, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm in a very privileged position that I... Uh, I work for the Professional Footballers Association. I teach professional footballers. I work for the League Managers Association. I teach managers and I get to talk to executives in football. I'm, I've got a rough idea of what the going rate is for a front of shirt deal. From what I'd heard, Forrest were perhaps being a little bit optimistic and that can come back to, to bite you on the bum um, in terms of uh, you know, get getting that deal over the line, and and it is a it is a tough industry, the the commercial side of football. So that didn't work out. Yeah, so that didn't help. They they did, yeah, okay as far as you know the the TV money was concerned. And the reason for that is because they didn't finish in the bottom three. You know, and and that certainly helps. So you put all of those factors together, the the total income was probably you know, a wee bit below where perhaps you might have envisaged but the costs were certainly higher because of this strategy with regards to player uh player recruitment whether that was on short-term deals with with no fees or uh you know other other players who came in and uh you know delivered or didn't deliver so i'm interested actually touching on the kind of shirt sponsorship part because it was something that obviously a lot of forest fans were actually very frustrated about a team in the premier league not having a shirt sponsor almost seems just ridiculous. Who wouldn't want to put their name on the shirt of a Premier League football team? But that being said, how much did Forrest not having a Premier League sponsor, a shirt sponsor for most of the season hurt them in terms of this PSR situation? OK, let, let's be realistic. They were £34.5 million pounds over the limit. A, a season-long deal is probably worth £7 million. So you know, if, if you go to a generic um asian betting sponsor you know the likes of you know likes of which you know, they, and they rotate you know you see them on burnley shirts and the next season it's wolves and the next season it's palace and the next season it's it's bournemouth and so on but they're normally paying around about you know seven mil for a years with years worth of contract um we, we don't know the insights dealings of forest you know from from what i'd heard on on the grapevine and and, and the grapevine is gossip and always take gossip with a large dose of salt because we get some great gossip, don't we? Um, and you go, well, I'm not sure that's true. I, I'd heard that Forrest were asking for yeah, a bit more and and the sponsors were saying, oh, it's okay, we'll go elsewhere. And then they just, and Forrest weren't prepared to compromise. And in the end, you know, there, there was there was no deal done. So they still would have been up on a charge and they still would have been subject to a points deduction had that front of shirt deal taken place. 
in in my opinion. I I do not think that anybody would have paid them thirty four and a half million pounds because, you know, that's that's big six income. That's more than Newcastle are getting for their shirt, and you know Newcastle have got a very friendly relationship with their sponsors, should we say? Yeah. So because I was just thinking about, I mean, yeah, as you say, it's a, a huge loss that they've made. So it wouldn't be a, a massive kind of um, reduction in that loss. That being said, but I suppose the biggest thing that would have reduced that loss would have been the sale of Brennan Johnson, um, which I think is it was the biggest talking point because Nicholas Randall Casey, who was the chairman at the time said a year before that Forrest were completely in line with PSR um, regulations, which of course meant that all Forrest fans just kind of went, okay, great, that's fine. We don't have anything to worry about. When in reality, that and it, maybe at the time it was the case, but I can't imagine it was still. Um, and, and eventually we found out that that wasn't the case. It wasn't great. Forrest, I think I read some of the documents and it said that Atletico Madrid had made an offer of uh, around £42 million, oh. £50 million. Euros. So uh, and I think, I don't know if that was depending on them selling another player, though, that yeah, was a bit was. of an yeah. issue. Yeah. Um, but this is a big question that Forrest fans have asked and maybe other fans of other clubs have asked. Why didn't Forrest just sell him to Brentford? But I would say, did the player want to move? And also, would it make sense? Do you think it would make sense for Forrest to have sold Brentford just to be in line with these PSR rules? Well, I think you've you've rightly said, you know, does the player want to move to, to Brentford? And, yeah, you know, I think Brentford is a fantastically run club. Um, and to give you one indication of that, Brentford have made more profits in their two seasons in the Premier League than Manchester United have made in 30. And you think, oh, Manchester United, they're, they're huge. They're, they're, a, they're a money-making machine. That's how well Brentford are run. Um, so I think we, we, we've got to remember that a player... Isn't isn't a commodity? You know, it's not like just flogging something on eBay, and and, and they they've got considerations with regards to their career. Um, so that there's that to take into account. There's also the view that Forrest valued Brennan Johnson or Player A, as he's referred to in the commission. And I do think it's absolutely fantastic that you you read this sixty page, very very, uh, you know, very very well researched and very thorough professional report and he says we're not going to call him by his name a uh, player a who was sold to spurs for 47 and a half million pounds on the first of september that's not exactly anonymity is it you know it does you never guess you never guess absolutely um forest valued him at 50 million so why accept 30 from brentford you know that's the argument um i think there was also the belief in the club that you know they, they hadn't the the owner was convinced that if they could evidence that they were serious about selling Brennan Johnson, that you could effectively backdate that sale. Um, is there precedent for that? But if you take a look at what happened with Sheffield Wednesday, when they sold their stadium to the owner, that sale was sort of backdated. And they had their points reduction reduced from 12 to 6 on the back of that. So, you know, perhaps they'd looked at that and said, well, we might be able to persuade the Premier League that because we had been making efforts, we'll, we'll be treated sympathetically. That doesn't appear to be the case. And I think the reason for that is, is twofold. First of all, Forrest benefited from Bren Brennan Johnson at the start of the 23-24 season. So, you know, if, he, he, if he'd scored a couple of goals, a couple of assists, they would have benefited in terms of, of points in the following season. And secondly, it would have created such a precedent that Everton would have had probably justification for a second appeal because they sold Richarlison for £60 million, ironically, to the same club Spurs, on the 30th of June to try to comply with PSR, where it, their opinion, he was his market value was 80. So therefore, they took a £20 million hit. Forrest ended up with an extra £17.5 million. Can you see that there would have been an inconsistency there? And, you know, football, football fans are very good at spotting things like this. And, you know, Everton fans are pretty forensic because they've spent you know, the, the last couple of years sort of, you know, with uh, a, lack of, uh, a lack of joy. Uh, in terms of the relationship with the owners and the financing of that club. So, you know, they, they would have had, I think, with some justification, grounds for complaint. 
um, because it, they were treating the two scenarios in a different manner. Yeah, it's it's a really kind of fascinating thing for me because as we were all told as Forest fans, it's like, well, you sell Brennan Johnson, you're okay. And it's it's kind of like the narrative um, was completely different to what the reality was, uh, which is really frustrating because I think as as football fans, not just as Forest fans, but this will happen again at some point. Point deductions will happen to another team in the future and uh, for as long as these rules go on. And, and I'm, I don't think I can say that 100% I agree with the rules, but they are in place. And, I, I, you know, I think in a way I can understand what Forest have done in terms of, well, they are trying to be more profitable. They are trying mm. to be more sustainable by selling Brennan Johnson. But of course, the timing is the issue. Um, and of course, that raises concerns in the future. And as I say, it will happen again. But talking of the future, there was reports coming out this week saying that Forrest are projected to make a loss of between 12 and £17 million pound next season. Um, well, by the end of this season, which would be another concern. So th there's been some speculation that maybe another points deduction would come in the future. But would you say that's the case? And what would you say at the moment that Forrest's PSR situation, if you can tell us, uh, is looking like for the future? Right. Again, if, if we go to the, the small print of the Commission's report, um, Forrest lost £42 million in 2022, £54 million in 2023. So we're at 96. They are forecast, as you rightly said, to lose 12 to 17. So let's, let's say best case scenario that they lose 12. You add those th three figures together. And their losses over three years are in the region of 106 million pounds. This year, at the end, they will be allowed to lose a maximum of 83. Because the way that it works is that for each season in the Premier League, you can lose 35. For each season in the Championship, 13. So I've got 35 plus 35 plus 13. So they've got a maximum allowable loss of 83. We're projecting something in excess of 100 million pounds. Their year end is the 30th of June, although there's a case for saying you know, they could extend that to the 31st of July. Yeah, well, not saying that they should do that or shouldn't do that, but it's, I've seen other clubs do it and, and then sell players in July. But they've still got, yeah, they've got the extra payroll in July as well. So, yeah, it, it's, you've got to take a look at the bigger picture. How can they bridge that gap? Well, they can, they, they've got two choices. They can either say, stuff it, we'll, we'll accept that we're going to be over the limit. And if we're in the Premier League next season, we'll simply take another points deduction. That, I think that would be disappointing, I think, from the club's point of view, from, from the fans' point of view, and so on. The other issue is that you can sell a player. And um, the profits on player sales do contribute towards the PSR loss. Are you being forced to sell a player? Well, if, if that's going to be your strategy, yes. And, of course, this... This sort of brings us back to the Brennan Johnson position. I, I mentioned you know, WhatsApp groups and the grapevine and so on. I was aware about Forrest last year. Now, if I'm aware and I'm just a teacher, you can bet your bottom dollar that Premier League chief executives were aware of the issue as well. So therefore, they were lowballing Forrest to sell by the 30th of June. Well, we've got a huge red flag now. You know, it, it, it's it's more than gossip because it's in the report, it's in the commission, commission's writings that Forest are look you know, are likely to to exceed the limit, and therefore everybody is going to lowball Forest if they try to sell players. So you might have to go and sell three players instead of two, or you know, two players instead of one in order to be within the limit. And then we we should surely take a step back and say. The Premier League's been whining about unintended consequences recently with regards to the creation of an independent regulator. Well, surely these are unintended consequences of creating PSR that you end up with football clubs that are trying to be sustainable. They're trying to be competitive. They're trying to make sure that the Premier League's this is an exciting product being forced to sell players at a discount in order to comply with the rules. I don't think the rules were set up with that in mind. It's a great point, is it? Because I think that is the worry for um, for teams like us, because we we are in that position where um, you know, he, he's excited. He wants to talk about PSR yeah, as well. Yeah, um, but I think it is really fascinating that that as a football team, 
Uh, and also, you know, lower end football teams in the Premier League do have to kind of go through this period of, and it probably won't just be a, a one time thing either. It will be a case of maybe the same again next year if we stay in the Premier League and, and every team has to go through it. But it's a shame that it's kind of come to that. And But but what other way could could the Premier League go about it? Well, I mean, the irony is, is, is that we probably won't be facing these rules next season because it looks as if PSR is going to be scrapped with some form of, of wage cap. Um, so that's a quasi-admission by the Premier League that the, the current rules are not fit for purpose. Um, you know, the Premier League will say, well, you know, we're just coming in line with, with UEFA. But that does seem a bit like the tail wagging the dog, because if there's six teams playing in Europe and you've got 14 teams that are not, why why should we, we go and change our rules just to go and fit in with, uh, it, you know, it makes the accountant's life at Liverpool and Manchester United that much easier. Um, so, yeah, there's no there's no easy fix to this. Um, again, I think there's questions within the industry itself. Some some fans are saying, and I think we know the clubs we're talking about here, why should we have cost control rules in the first place? To, to which my reply is, well, that that's fine, but then it, sort of, it just becomes an issue of uh, yeah, who wins the Premier League from a my dad's bigger than your dad point of view, i.e. who's got the biggest pockets. If if you've got one club that is funded to such an extent that they can afford to sign you know, uh, you know, Mbappe and Haaland and you know, you know, Uncle Tom Cobley and all, um, then it's what what what's the point? You know, there, there's there's only a little bit of romance left in football, but it's it's still great. You know, I'm absolutely delighted that Coventry City have got to the FA Cup semi-finals. I'm, I don't know, in East Midlands, it's probably, I'm absolutely delighted that Leicester City won the Premier League in 2016 because the, the, the rich clubs, why, why should they have everything? They, they win the League Cup every year. They win the FA Cup practically every year. You know, having the occasional uh, you know, non-big six club win something, I think is, is good for the, the overall ethos of the game. I, you know, I'm, I'm old enough to remember Forrest winning the equivalent of the Premier League and two, two European leagues. So two European Cups, it was absolutely fantastic. And I think it was indicative of a different time because everybody was really pleased when they won those Cups, okay, apart from county fans. Um, but do, do, we, do we need rules? If you take a look at practically every sport, NFL, NBA, Formula One, cricket, uh, you know, ba baseball, Every, practically every team sport on the planet has has cost control rules. So it's not as if they are unique to football. And it's then a case of what do we want from the rules? You know, do we want a level playing field? Well, the, the answer to that from the broadcasters is no. Because if you talk to, to broadcasters, um, 2016 was a terrible year for, for Sky and BT Sport because Leicester City won the Premier League. Leicester City don't generate big viewer numbers. Yeah, they'd much, you know, this season where you've got Liverpool, Arsenal, and Manchester City is great from the broadcaster's point of view because they're three of the big six. They'd love to have Manchester United up there as well. They'd love to have Chelsea up there because they deliver in terms of numbers. So, so the broadcasters don't want a level playing field. They, they don't want a, you know, a, a Malmo or a Forest or a, a Porto getting to the, the Champions League final. And the way that the system is now geared, that's almost impossible for, for those those days to return. Um, so what 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 is fair? P people on a much higher pay grade than me uh, probably have better answers than me. I, I was asked, uh, I can't say by who, but by yeah, an organisation quite, quite big, not the Premier League, uh, and not actually part of football, would I actually design a series of models using different sets of assumptions and uh you know one of those was based on the the nfl model where uh merchandise sales are shared where gate receipts 60 percent to the home club 40 percent is pulled and they're, they're shared um you know, we, we can't have the the equivalent of a draft in football because you know, we don't have the college system in the us but um, and when i say well these are the numbers the big clubs were still big 
but the gaps between the the rich and the middle classes in yeah, the middle tier in in the the Premier League dropped uh, certainly decreased. And I said, hey, it looks a bit too communist uh, for our liking. Yeah, we'll just 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 bin that one off, Kieran. Yeah, and it, I, I just find it really like fascinating because obviously football, especially in England with the Premier League, the money is so massive. You know, like billions of pounds for TV deals and. And as you say, you can understand you can understand why the broadcasters do want these big teams. But at the same time, it's disappointing to see uh, that that's the way that football has gone. Um, because I love watching the TV and I love flicking on a game. You know, I like a big game. I like the watching the United v Liverpool as much as I hate them both, uh, especially in recent times. Um, you know, but I enjoy watching those games because it, it because it is the big game. So the mentality and you can kind of understand why football fans want to watch the big teams. But as a supporter of a team in the Premier League now, which is, still feels crazy after all of my life being in the Championship and League One, and I'm so grateful to be in this position. Um, it is a shame that, you know, that the, the big six are prioritised, I think, in, in that way, which they are, and no one can really deny. Um, but kind of going back to a Forest point of view, we've got the point of seduction now, we've got to play on with it, and, you know, I'm not going to sulk and winch as much as it annoys me. Um, but that being said, should Forrest look at this appeal because the owner wants to make the appeal? He's frustrated. He's angry. Feels like the club are hard done by. And um, you can understand why he's frustrated because of the investment that he's made. But is it actually worth an appeal? And, and also, could I don't know if you can clear this up, but do Forrest risk having a, a couple more points added on to their deduction? Should they appeal? I, th I think answering that second question, I think it's very remote. You know, we're all familiar with if a player is given a red card and the club appeals, if it's deemed to be frivolous, I, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm a Brighton fan. Um, we, we played Sheffield United a few weeks ago and one of their players took out Mitoma with, I think, best described as a crunching tackle, um, which was pretty high. Um, and by the way, him. yeah, Jakob Moda should have been sent off against Forrest. You know, and I was at there and... I turned to the guy sitting next to me at the time and said, that's a red. And everybody around, you know, what's that, Bruce? How, how that's not, yeah, if we're thinking it should be a red. You know, so, you know, there, there's, there's no... But if if, if uh, Sheffield United appealed that and you go, well, you, know, you, you took him out at the thigh, um, they, that could have had an... Ex, you know, it could have increased the punishment. I don't think you could probably do that in relation to a points deduction because the case it does come down to to individual arguments and interpretations of, of rules and so on. Um, so that is a fear. Could the Premier League appeal on the grounds that the punishment was too lenient? Because we, we now find out that the Premier League wanted an eight point deduction. And that seems to make no sense because when Richard Masters uh, and the Premier League were involved with the Everton case, they said the points deduction should be six points for going over the rules and then an extra one point for each five million or part of five million that you're above the limit. So in the case of Forrest, that would have been 13 points had the Premier League been consistent with what it was saying to the Everton Commission. So could they could they put in an appeal? I, I don't think they really want to, I, I don't want to get involved. Yeah, they, they've they've taken such a beating recently. Um, so therefore, it comes down to the forest side of the appeal. The the downside, more uncertainty, more costs. The upside, if that four points gets reduced to three, that could be the difference between being in the Premier League and not being in the Premier League next season. That's worth in the region of yeah, £70 million for the club. So you can understand it from the, the owner's point of view. Mr. Mar Marikinakis has brought in huge sums of money into Forest. He doesn't want to see that that you know decrease in revenue of seventy million quid. It's a tough one, isn't it? Because I think my my uh, um, view is based on the idea that there could potentially be that increase in points deduction. But of course, if we don't really know, and if that wasn't the case, I'd say to the club, if you feel you've got a good enough um, uh, case for getting a successful appeal, then maybe you should make it. I mean, it's they've got Nick DeMarco working on it, who's obviously fantastic, worked on the Newcastle ownership case, worked with Harry Toffolo before as well. 
Uh, and I, I don't know if he's worked with, I think he worked with Derby County as well. He um, did, yeah. During their yeah. time as well. So um, obviously won't have anything against him now. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a really precarious situation for any football club to be in. And I think that we just need to focus on getting points really more than anything now. And looking at the running, it's entirely possible. But of mm. course, this will have an effect on the, the collective mentality. Um, but Kieran, I really appreciate you giving your time to talk about things. I know it's a bit of a, a busy week for you, so I just want to give you an extra big thank you for, for taking your time to talk to me. Well, and, uh, thank you, Jamie, yeah. for the invite and uh, best wishes for the rest of the season. And as you rightly said, let's do it on the pitch and then you won't have to worry about it. Because if we're, if we're honest, we're talking about probably one point either way. Hmm. Exactly. And, and also, I, as a Forest fan, I do believe that there's a lot of winnable games coming up. There is winnable games coming up. Uh, and, and if we can't do it on the pitch now, I'd say, well, that's on us. Forget the points deduction. We've had opportunities to to um, to kind of diffuse this situation previously. But I won't go down that rabbit hole. That's that's a, a podcast for another day when we're not talking about um, PSR. But Kieran, thank you so much for coming on. Listen to the latest Price of Football podcast as well. I'd recommend it. Been listening to it this morning fantastic and um, looking forward to, to maybe speaking to you again at some point with Forrest still being in the Premier League um, but if you've enjoyed this podcast please subscribe uh, please follow Kieran on his social media and also the price of football and that uh, we'll see you very soon thank you for listening take care <laughs>